All right, we're gonna do another charm video here. If you watch the Cracker Jack video, or the huge lot of Cracker Jack toys found, you might have remembered this little golf ball that I thought was possibly silver. And the reason I thought that was because I used to have a small collection of sterling silver charms that were kind of like probably from the 30s. And I had to sell those, but I did keep this one here as my favorite. And it looks like a, a 19, late 1920s um, telephone, the one that came after the cradle phone. So these charms, they were in with other 1930s charms, and they were every once in a while you see a silver one in with a group of charms. Like if you look at the charms on eBay, Cracker Jack lots, whatever, uh, these silver charms pop up sometimes. So I had to sell about the about a dozen that I had, but I kept my favorite one. And I regretted selling them uh, because they were just so cool, but I needed the money at the time. Well, recently, when I was at an antique mall, uh, the antique mall that was in my one video with all the big statues and everything, uh, I did pick up this. And I saw it right as I was about to leave when I was paying for my stuff. And it was in the display case where you actually process your payments. And it just seemed kind of like synchronicity that I was just thinking about the charms and then was able to buy a pretty big collection of them. And one of the things I like about this is it kind of reinforces my suspicion that these charms were from the late 20s, early 30s. So we're going to go through these. Um, let's try to start at one end here. Try to get really close up. If you hear the cats going crazy, just disregard. All right, so first thing we got here is a kitchen sink. Not a kitchen sink, but like a like a um, lavatory. Right here is a like a hose reel, maybe for like a garden hose. Um, an anchor. There's a cross, Mark Sterling. With a heart. I guess the clasp, Sterling. Sorry if you hear me breathing. I got my face up close to my camera so I can make sure it's focused. If I have to step away to discipline some cats, don't worry about it. Okay, so this thing here, it's got cloisoned enamel. That is, I believe, a Freemasonic um, Eastern Star insignia. I think the uh, Masons have a women's organization called Eastern Star. Here's the old trusty uh, Sears and Roebuck 1902 catalog where they got fraternal organization medallions and jewelry. And there's your there's your Eastern Star. Hard enameled engraved Eastern Star. Yeah, 335. That was oh, solid gold. That explains that. Okay. So this was a bracelet, sterling silver bracelet. Okay, this one here, sterling. This one just blew my mind. This is a sewing machine. And I don't wanna mess it up or break it, but if you turn this, the crank, which on an old fashioned sewing machine, you had like a belt that turned the, uh, the crank on the back, and you could operate it by your foot. Okay, let me go. Figure this out. Yeah. If you turn the crank, it actually actuates. Like the it would be the needle going up and down. Let's see it going up and down. I mean, the craftsmanship to make these things. Okay. A lot of this stuff has kind of like a theme park carnival type uh, theme to it. I can't tell what that's... Sterling. 
Here's a Ferris wheel. Looks like the uh, the cupolas were probably were actually like painted at one point. Yeah, blue, red, and it turns and the cupolas turn. Okay, I gotta figure out where I left off here. Okay, anchor Ferris wheel. Okay, there's a uh, oiler, like a metal oiler. And they even like peened over the edges and made it look like kind of beat up like a tin oiler usually looks. Okay, Ferris wheel. There's like a a sword with a um, like a shroud around it that might be some kind of like religious thing. There's a like a janitor's bucket. Where he'd have his, I'm assuming that's what that is, or for like a, a painter or a janitor, some kind of worker. Like his janitor bucket with his broom or trash can. Okay. There's a thimble. A lot of these are Mark Sterling, but I'm not going to try to find the mark on each one. Okay, so here's another thing that makes me realize or believe these the age or the vintage of this. This is recognizably an old Mack truck. And the Mack trucks, here's a, a, a model railroad, um, 1923 Mack high lift. So the Mack trucks had like wooden spoked wheels and a kind of a snub nose and an open air uh, area for the driver to sit. They had a really distinctive look to them. And that's what that is. That's just a tanker truck. I mean, the trucks you could have any kind of back end type of deal. The wheels actually look like they turn. The roof might have been kind of smooshed down. I'm not gonna try to unsmoosh it. Okay, we got a, another kind of generic heart with an arrow through it. Here's a piano. And it had keys that were like enameled at one point or painted. And it actually opens up. See, they had the black and white keys. Sterling, it's like a little locket. They even got the legs, like, look like they're turned wood to simulate the, uh, they, each of these things, whoever made these, went through a lot of a trouble to make. Okay, here's the, it's like the tricycle in my, uh, my video, the giant, the jumbo tricycle. Okay, here's like a, Little kerosene stove. My mom had one of these when we were little. She might still have it. Like a, like a little parlor stove. Maybe it used coal. I don't know, but it looked just like that. It had a handle where you could move it around. Cowboy boot. Some of these are cast. Some of these are just, um, you know, assembled. Like sheet silver, perhaps. However, they, each of them, they had a different means of making them. There's a... Watering pitcher, maybe a tea, maybe a tea kettle. Okay, where am I at here? Okay, this thing. I thought, well, that's like a, like a movie camera. It's because you know, back when the, in the olden days of film, they would have to, you know, the camera operator would have to turn that crank. And I thought, you know, that is like the lens right there. So I was doing a little bit of research and I was looking up, you know, 1920s movie camera, 1930s movie camera. I think it's actually supposed to go like like this. Like that's the pedestal. And then the the lens, there's like the film, you know, like the uh the blank film and then it advances onto the next spool is the one that's been recorded on, I assume. Yeah, that actually turns. So movie camera. Uh let's see here. Okay. Sterling. There's a pair of shoes. There'd be like maybe baby shoes or a pair of them. You can see where like they even like peened it over to make it look like cloth. I don't know how they would have made those. Those are actually like hollow. This is, I guess you could say it maybe kind of looks like a bomb. I think it's a dirigible. The U.S. Navy had dirigibles in the 30s. Um, a lot of times they're out in California over the ocean, like observation dirigibles. 
that's what that looks like. There's no cupola on the bottom, but that looks like a dirigible. There's a violin or fiddle. I am not a musician, so I don't need a sterling. Somebody will correct me, maybe. Or maybe they won't. They probably don't care. Okay, this thing here is, I believe, okay, where is it? All right, I think that's a weaving loom. There's a, come on now. There's a bird in a birdhouse. I mean, these things are all on this bracelet, and they, I'm not going to try to take them off. It would be nice as a collector to have them all loose, but to make a video or even take photographs with them all jumbled together, this is probably the most practical way to do it. This might be like a dumbbell or like a baby rattle. That is, I believe, an oil derrick or oil rig or whatever. Which, that would have been something in the 1930s. A lot going on was drilling for oil, I would assume. It might be like a pylon of some type. Or kind of reminds me of the Archeo radio um, tower. There's a heart. A lot of hearts on here. Sterling. Looks like it's solid. And I don't think I missed any. Here's a well pump. That would have been ubiquitous in everyone's life probably back in the 30s is have a well pump or a pump for your cistern and it actually goes up and down the thing there and the last one is an 1860 seated liberty half dime and a bezel that's i mean that's a real half dime so Back in the 30s, a coin like that, they would have said, eh, just throwing an old half dime. You know, not, no big deal. I mean, think about it. In the 1930s, what kind of coins were still in circulation? You probably got all, you probably got all kinds of silver coins, maybe from the Civil War in pocket change. So anyway, that's all of them. These are pretty expensive, actually. There was two uh, sets. This was the larger of the two sets. And uh, I actually had the money to pay for it at the time. And so I couldn't resist. So my favorite, I mean, obviously that was really nice of them to throw in when they made this, throw in half dime. And surprised nobody yanked that off there and kept it over the years. But I would say my favorite one has to be the sewing machine. I mean, come on now. They didn't have to make that thing actually move. So thanks for watching. Uh, follow me over on Instagram. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, down in the comments, leave what your favorite one is. I got more charms and Cracker Jack and different videos. I'll try to just do like a, um, in the future, just like a whole box or assortment of, of different stuff. I got some gumball charms from the 50s. So here's my 1930s silver charms. Going into the Depression, um, people didn't have a lot of money, so it seemed like to try to be able to sell stuff, they kind of uh, raised the stakes a little bit and made stuff like this. So anyway, hope you watch, like the video and I'll see you soon.